Here's today's first word, daily devotion. On June the 21st, we turn to 2 Kings 5 through 6, and we see a very familiar story. That is, if you remember reading the Bible as a young child like I do, then you remember the story of Naaman. Naaman and how he was cured from leprosy. Matter of fact, our church, one of the things we've done here at First Baptist in Starkville is that we have, we have also produced alongside our ESV Everyday Bible. We've also, uh, our children's minister has produced a, uh, another corresponding study, uh, this book called It's All About Jesus Bible Storybook, which follows along with the ESV Everyday Readings. And on page 105, it tells the story of Naaman. And then it has this wonderful Christ connection on page 107. Listen, Naaman was sick with a skin problem. His disease went away when he trusted God's instruction from Elisha and washed in the river. All people have a sin problem that leads to death. We all need a healer. When we trust Jesus as Lord and Savior, God forgives our sin and heals us. And if you have children and you're listening to this daily reading, I encourage you to get a copy of the It's All About Jesus Bible Storybook. Matter of fact, in the top left of this book that I have in my hand, it says one big story. And that's exactly why we're reading the Bible. We're reading the Bible as one big story, of course, with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone story of the whole Bible. And so on June the 21st, it's a reminder for me as I was reading this of just the power of storytelling. As we have these wonderful stories and our children, it's one thing when we sit in solitude and read these stories to ourselves. It's quite another thing when we enter the arena of our children and we read these stories to our children. So if you're a grandparent or an uncle or an aunt or a parent, I encourage you to uh, take time and read this story with a child. So June 21st, remember we have Elisha who received a double portion, and here we get a chance to see his double portion. He heals Naaman the leper. And of course then in verse, in chapter six, and uh, we have him, uh, we have him raising a iron, raising iron uh, or making iron float, I should say. Uh, Of course they're cutting trees down and a log his axe fell into the water and he cried out alas my master it was borrowed then the man of God said where did it fall when he showed him the place he cut off a stick threw it in there and made the iron float and he said take it up so he reached out his hand and took it and so we have these instances where we see these miraculous occurrences and those miraculous occurrences by the prophets are all there to remind us that we are to hope and trust in the Lord And what a great lesson for us to learn as well as a great lesson for us to teach our children. But let's turn our attention to Acts chapter 21. Let's go to our New Testament reading today. And notice this we have in verse 17, the we, the us, and then in verse 18, another us. That lets us know that this is Luke. Luke is telling the story from a firsthand experience. And this occasion, he was there. And of course, Paul is is being Uh, arrested here. He's in Jerusalem and he's causing a ruckus because of how he stands for Jesus and he tells his story. Look at what happens here. He says in verse 37, one of my Greek professor's favorite verse here, and this verse says, do you know Greek? And that's a question that David Lanier would ask us uh, every time we sat in his class at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. Do you know Greek? And of course, by the end of three Greeks, we all said, No, we do not know Greek. But anyway, Paul replied, verse 39, I am a Jew from Tarsus in uh, Cilicia, a citizen, no obscure city. I beg you to permit to speak to the people. And when there was a great hush, that's wonderful, he addressed them in the Hebrew language saying, and then here's his pedigree. Here's Paul telling his story. I grew up educated in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel. And then notice the change here. I persecuted this way, verse 4, and then he tells his story, as I was on my way. Do you see how that changes? It goes from uh, my way to the way. Paul was once on his way, but then God changed him and put him on the way. And that's our story, and that may be some of your stories of people that you're going to encounter 
Today, maybe you've given them this, uh, this episode of the everyday reading, encouraging them to read, and you realize that there is your way, and then there's God's way. Well, God's way is the best way, and we have all these years of history in our hand called the Bible to prove it. And here, don't miss this, look at verse uh, 8, who are you? And then verse 10, what shall I do? And that's always the pattern, who are you and what shall I do? And then notice here, I want you to see this as we close out our reading today. Paul has a certain ethic about him as he's being accosted for how he stands on the truth of the resurrection. And he intently, chapter 23, looked at the council, brothers, I have lived my life before God and in a good conscience up to this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Are you sitting to judge me according to the law, and yet contrary to the law you order me to be struck? Those who stood by said, Would you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I didn't know, brothers, that he was the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. Now, look at Paul's ethic. Paul is trusting in the Lord. And look at what he says, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. Oh, how far our ethic has come from Paul's Christian ethic. But look at what he says here. That following night, the Lord stood by him, verse 11, and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. And so look at Psalm 140 in light of what we just read with Paul. Paul is entrusting himself to the Lord, and the Lord stood by him. And speaking of which, look at Psalm 140. And look at verse 13. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. What's our confidence as we face today? What's the confidence that we want to entrust to our children? It's this confidence of righteousness, standing with truth, realizing that as we do, the Lord is right there with us.